Yeah, what is a robot? I think it's a fascinating question. And if you ask 10 people, you probably get 10 different answers. And I think it's, it serves as a good tool to communicate about the work, even though what the actual definition is is probably not that material. You know, if you look at, if you look up, if you Google uh, robot definition, you'll find a huge range of definitions, all the way from some automated machine that can do a, se a series of complicated actions automatically, which almost would include a cuckoo clock, all the way to the more sci-fi answer that you get from your five-year-old, which is like something more anthropomorphic, something with legs and arms and a head, or something that looks like an animal. They can exhibit some behaviors and perhaps some intelligence akin to a biological system. And you know, I think it's everything that and everything in between. I think my favorite definition is really a system that can exhibit motion or manipulation that can react and respond to stimuli, exhibit some intelligence and decision making, or, there's an or, is teleoperated. And I'm doing that because there are lots of robots out there that really don't have any uh, great decision making abilities, but we, would, that we still consider robots like the, sur the surgical robots or other robots that do remote presence that save lives uh, in the military. Those are all robots, but because of what they do, they need to be teleoperated. Well, certainly it's very exciting to be in this geographical area. Massachusetts, Massachusetts and in particular the Boston area, is a hotbed for innovation, not just pharmaceutical, biomed, but robotics. We have a lot of robotics technology here. As you mentioned, uh, we have many labs, in uh, academic labs in, in universities. We also have a lot of companies, small companies, medium-sized companies that do very good innovation and product development in the robotics space. The, the innovations come about by, you know, it's sort of a messy mix of, of what happens in reality that there is the, uh, the champions, the great minds and universities like Harvard University or Yale University uh, that they come up with these great ideas, champions that that uh, are really, that believe in a certain idea or, or a certain application. A challenge like with all innovation is that big gap from having a good idea, demonstrating the idea, and turning it into a successful product. And we're getting better at that. At iRobot, for example, we have a lot of partnerships with universities. We go after research contracts together find good matches between our skills and the academic partners, and then we execute them. And as these projects are successful, we can then turn them to products or components, licensed components, so there are many models for harvesting the goodness of that, of that partnership. These days, it's primarily the government that sponsors and initiates research in certain areas. It's the academic institutions that come up with great, great ideas, most in the basic research area, but also increasingly in the applied side. And then it's a partnership, this triangle with the industry, like iRobot, that brings it all together and partners with academia, funded by, by government, to develop and test and prototype these ideas and demonstrate, yeah, we got something here, this is worthy of pursuit for a product. You know, there's, there's a huge set of biological motivators and inspiration areas that, that feed and help robotics. I mean, the, e the easiest one, the conceptually other ones, when robots become more human-like, more anthropomorphic, of course, the study of how humans do things and how humans are built or biological systems are built is of great value. In, in my past work, we have often worked with biologists to feed the development of technology, and that has always been extremely fruitful. Because we really have to solve the same kind of problems. We can benefit from, from biologists to learn how, how animals work, how humans work, on all levels, mechanics, dynamics, sensing, materials, but it actually works the other way around by robots solving the same kind of problems, even in isolation. Often the biologists can learn something about how tasks need to get done or how, ta how tasks could get done and they can start forming hypotheses how perhaps human do them. Well, being in, in a company and being quite a pragmatic person, I feel like the biggest challenge is really 
taking ideas and turning them into something of value in a product. It is, it's, it's challenging and great fun to develop ideas and to do lab, lab prototypes, but the difficulty then is how to turn those into products that somebody at Costco, like when they go buy a Roomba, they take out again their hard-earned money and, and buy that thing, and it, it, and it delivers the combination of value, reliability, ease of use, and utility at, at a great cost. And um, we're getting better at that, but I think this is part of the reason why robotics has had this up and down over the last 20 years. It's just a hard problem. And robots, full robots, autonomous systems are just complex devices. And finding that sweet spot, like iRobot was lucky enough to find with the Roomba, is, is challenging. But we're getting better at it, in part fueled by, by Moore's Law. We're getting better and better computing devices for mobile computing. We make progress in perception in part fueled by biological um, inspiration. And uh, sensors and actuators become cheaper. So things get better. So there's just really light at the end of the tunnel.